উঠিলে জননী ভারত বর্ষ উঠিল বিশ্বে সে কি কল রঙ সে কি মা ভক্তি সে কি মহর্ষ সেদিন তোমার প্রভাই ধরাই প্রভাত হইল গভীর রাত্রি গন্তিল সবে জয় মা জননী জগ তারিণী জগ ধাত্রি ধন্য হইল ধরণী তোমার চরণ কমল করে আস্পর্শ রাইল জয় মা জগন মোহিনী জগত জননী ভারত It's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Sharvani Guptu to deliver the 2022 Kallani Shenguptu Memorial Lecture. To honor Kallani Shenguptu's life and her love of Swadeshi Shangeet, this endowment was established at Gitika Trust to highlight research and documentation of Swadeshi Shangeet. This year, <clears throat> our distinguished speaker, Dr. Sharvani Guptu, is the professor of Asian Literary and Cultural Studies in Netaji Institute for Asian Studies, Kolkata. Dr. Guptu has an extensive research experience on nationalism and culture in colonial and post-colonial India. Notable publications authored by Dr. Guptu include The Music of Nationhood, Dijendral Roy of Bengal, Knowing Asia, Being Asian, Cosmopolitanism and Nationalism in Bengali Periodicals, 1870 to 1940. She has also co-edited volumes such as Modern Indian Sensibilities, The Regional Great Game in the Indian Ocean and India's Evolving Maritime Strategy. Dr. Sharvani Guptu is at present working on two monographs, namely Showcasing Asia at the World, Revival of Buddhism and Means of Asian Connectivity, an Intellectual Journey in Bengal, mid 19th century to mid 20th century, and another on Bharat and Brahmadesha. Dr. Gupta is actively engaged with Netaji Research Bureau as its council member, and is the secretary of the Asian and Pacific uh, Studies. We are truly thankful to have Dr. Guptu amongst us today and privileged to host her lecture. Without further ado, I would request Dr. Guptu to deliver her address. Over to Dr. Guptu, thank you. Namaskar to all of you. I will start with um, expressing my uh, pronoun to Kollani Shen Guptu and my guru, uh, Srimati Krishna Chattopadhyay. I must also thank and uh, ex express my gratitude to my supervisor, um, Professor Gautam Bhadro, as well. Dijendralal Roy, 1863 to 1913, was an important figure in the growth of cultural nationalism at the dawn of the 20th century in Bengal. Born to a cultured family of Krishnanagar, Dijendralal experimented with different genres of literature, poetry, and songs in tunes that were distinctive for that era, and also drama, satire, and essays to make a difference in Bengal to Bengali mentalities on the path to nationalism. Dijendralal was one of the few among his compatriots in the field of literature and arts to realize that it, uh, it was the Indian mind and beliefs that needed to be formed and reconstructed. It was his belief that true freedom could come only if flaws in the national life could be removed and a new nation created through the inculcation of values which were universal and therefore free from all narrowness of race, religion, and nationality. The new nation had to be strong in values, in culture, and in economy. Only then could Indians compete with their colonizers and regain their position in the world. 
He used different branches of literature to identify such ailments and eradicate them. In an era when nationalism was widespread and unrestrained in Bengali writing, where highlighting communitarian and racial uniqueness of the Bengali people was the focus, one notices in the general a difference in tone. His celebration of the Matribhumi encapsulated memories and events that had extra Bengali character so that the Bharat and Bongo were juxtaposed in a fluid manner when referring to the motherland. In his earliest writings, one notices another aspect of Dijendralal's writing, <clears throat> an appeal to universal values and a moderate cosmopolitan tone a conscious awareness of his role as an educator and entertainer. Dijendralal's essays express his views clearly, and one can, through a critical appreciation of his creative work, perceive his stand. He was a prolific writer, and though he lived for only 50 years, the range of his creative talent may be evaluated by its popularity in his lifetime and even today. His style was so new, and different that every song was greeted with accolades or criticism as soon as it was published. His songs and plays played an important part in arousing patriotic spirit during the Shadishi movement against the partition of Bengal in 1905. His vigorous writing, the novelty of his humor and his satirical verses and farces the newness of his musical compositions, and above all, the flamboyant way he engaged in literary and social debate in the periodicals of the time made him the talk of the town. Unfortunately, they did not win him a continued following after his untimely death. <clears throat> That Dijendralal has been misjudged by posterity is exposed in the lack of discussion about his writing in the century and a half following his death. Though he came from one of the most respected families of Bengal and was in constant touch with famous personalities and leading intellectuals of the day in his father's home, Dijendralal did not really have a strong backing of any group, institution, or powerful friends who would keep his memory alive through circulation of his work. It is the immense popularity of his plays and his patriotic and comic songs that kept Dijendralal alive in people's mind. His experimentation could have been continued by his talented son, Dilip Kumar Rai, who was very young at the time of Dijendralal's untimely death, but had from a very young age achieved a deep understanding of the blending of the best of East and West that his father represented. Dilip became internationally renowned for his musical compositions and his writing on music and musicians, and he acknowledged his artistic debt to his father, Dijendralal, in his books, Udashi Dijendralal and Mohanubhav Dijendralal, where he discussed the poet dramatist's creativity through a critical and artistic lens. But Dilip was always attracted to spirituality, which ended his wanderings, musical and otherwise, and led to his retirement to the Aurobindo ashram. That was another tragedy, as Dilip Kumar alone had the capability of bringing his father's work to the public. After the general death in 1913, only Bharat Barsho, the Bengali literary journal which he had conceived and created, stayed loyal to him regularly publishing discussions on his writing, tributes in prose and verse by admirers and notations of his songs, which, would have, which has been vital for the survival of the tunes. But a large amount of his work stays unexplored and melodies of most of his songs are unknown. Only his collected works and a few critical works in Bengali were published in 2013, a hundred years up after his death. Dijendralal's writings and his popular plays influenced dramatists in other languages as well, but there has hardly been any discussion in English on his contribution to Bengali literature and culture, nor were any of his works translated into English or any other or other Indian languages. It's only recently after his sesquicentennial year that his contribution to the nation building project is being acknowledged and re-evaluated, though in a very small way. 
Very few of his creative works have been translated and no one other than his son Dilip took much initiative. Brian Rees wrote in the introduction of Fall of Mewar in 1946 that though Dijendralal's name is as yet unknown in Europe, some of his songs have been translated by Otto von Glasner. In my opinion, neglect cannot be attributed to individuals or individual action alone. Though it cannot be denied, denied that molding of public opinion in favor of or against particular writers has often been due to seemingly minor or fickle reasons. I have tried to deal with um, accusations of the leading public in my book, which I will not discuss today. The truth actually is more complicated and lies embedded in the psyche of the Bengali society of the early 20th century. In my opinion, Dijendralal would not be appreciated by most of his contemporaries because all aspects of his literary expression had a fragrance of newness. This was an age when everyone dreamt of doing something new, but very few had the courage to do so. Those who attempted to be a part of the new had to garner support. Dijendralal was fortunate initially to have that support from Rabindranath Tagore, the most towering personality of that time, whose family was a trendsetter in Bengali society. And their creative combination through participation in the literary soirees created excitement and hope. But all too soon, Dijendralal in his characteristic impetuous style alienated uh, Rabindranath and many others and embarked on a literary come personal debate with Rabindranath in the pages of the literary magazines of the day from 1904 onwards, not realizing that he was setting himself adrift on a journey of solitude. The nuances in his writing and experimentation in different fields were not comprehensible to all, and he was stigmatized strange at best and unpatriotic at worst. Nationalism had become the preoccupation of the educated Bengalis in the 19th century and crystallization through various forms of the relationship between imagination and community in the creation of the nation was reflected in vernacular literature. As a member of the conscious intelligentsia, Dijendralal's writings were bound to be a response to the trends and ideas of the time. Dijendralal was born in Krishnanagar on 19 July 1863 to Prashan Nomoi Devi and Kartikyo Chandra Roy, who was the Divan of the Krishnanagar Raj family and a noted writer and singer himself. Dijendralal completed his school and college before coming to Calcutta to do his post graduation in English literature in Presidency College. <clears throat> He was then offered a scholarship for higher studies in England at the Chichester College. And on his return, he joined government service and was the settlement officer in various districts before joining the Department of Land Records and Agriculture. So though he was a major in English, he actually trained in agriculture because um, the, there was no, uh, no science student of uh, merit in that year. He was married in 1887 to Shurabala Devi, the daughter of Pratap Chandra Mojundar, and had two children, Dilip Kumar and Maya. He started composing songs at a very tender age and published literary work from 1882 till his death in 1913. Three dramas and a collection of songs were published after his death. He also conceptualized a literary journal, Bharat Varsho, but died before its start. In this lecture, I would like to highlight some of the facets of Dijendralal's patriotism expressed in some popular songs written at various times, but later collected posthumously in 1915 as a collection called Gaan. The patriotism that he invoked was of a complex nature. There was a sense of pride in belonging to a territorial and imagined space as symbolized in the song Bongo Amar Jomendi Amar. This was a new sensibility of the 19th century that Dijendralal inherited and contributed to. How could there be any sorrow, shame, and degradation when so many millions raised their voices in pride to call the land they live in as Amar Desh, my country? 
Throughout his creative career, from Arjogatha Part 1, published in 1882, when he was still a student, till the very end, Vijendra Lal evaluated and praised the country of his birth while inspiring its inhabitants to action. Through description of its physical, metaphysical, and spiritual qualities, he is identifying a space which he belongs to and creating a community of people living within that space. The physical or natural beauty of the country is repeatedly stressed because it is everlasting and inalienable uh, through colonial oppression. At a time when there was a loss of self-worth due to loss of freedom, the unchanging beauty of nature brings a hope of being a part of the assets which can never be taken away by the colonizer. <clears throat> when I discuss uh, the songs, I will try to sing the Bengali versions so that you will also have uh, an idea of the tune. But please excuse um, me because it will not be of very high quality, but I will try. This song uh, has been translated, but the, the songs that I have used uh, today has been actually, I've used the translations of Dilip Kumar Rai and Sri Aurobindo, uh, who have the best translations uh, of his songs. Unfortunately, there is no other translation. I'm, I have attempted, but a very poor translation of some of his um, works in my book. <clears throat> बोखे दुले चे मुक्तारो हार पंचो शिंधो जो मुना गंगा On thy brow the snows corona, round thy knees leap ocean spray, heaving rivers rise and fall like pearl strings to thy bosom's play. The other very popular song, Dhano Dhanno Pushpa Bhara, which also describes the beauty of the motherland, goes as follows. I have to add here, uh, because it's absolutely imperative, is that Dhano Dhanno Pushpa Bhara is the most popular of the Gail Roy songs and has been sung. It, is, it, is, it was, in fact, the um, song, college song in the college that I studied in and is also uh, songs of many schools and colleges, government schools and colleges. Unfortunately, because it is so popular, the words have been distorted. And though it is dhano dhanno pushpo bhara, in majority people sing it as dhano dhanne pushpe bhara, which is very sad because uh, there should not be any distortion of words, lyrics at least. There is distortion in tunes, but that is not so important. <coughs> Dhano dhano pushpo bhara, ama dere boshon thara, tahar maje ache deshe, shokol deshe rashira, oshe shop no de, doi deshe desh, sriti deye dera. Amon deshti ko thao khoje, pave na ko tumi. Shakul deshe rani sheche, amar janmo bhumi. Sheche amar janmo bhumi. Sheche amar janmo bhumi. The other uh, innovation that uh, D.L. Roy introduced in many of his patriotic songs, which I will discuss later when I discuss the innovations in his songs, is the use of chorus. And chorus is very important in uh, inspirational songs because that is the part that everybody can join in. This has been translated by Dilip Kumar Rai as this fruitful earth so richly hued with gold and grain and blossoms endued still holds within a land surpassing all others glow and gleam. Girdled by irised memories, woven by halitan dream, you will never find in the world below a land like our land of birth. Queen of the continents is she, supremely fair on earth. Appreciation of the beauty of nature 
being a part of the country's treasures as well as enhancing the beauty of the country just as jewels enhance a woman's beauty are new ideas of the 19th century arising due to the exposure to Western literature and culture. The contradiction in the minds of the Bengalis torn between admiration for Western literature, science and philosophy and hatred for the oppressive rule of the British led to introspection. Not only physical beauty, but the inalienable properties are also her literary, philosophical and ideological treasures. There are other qualities which are the world's delight. The message of peace and love that emanated from the soul of India, the hand that fed Earth's millions, is the world's delight and world's savior. <clears throat> the role of memories in nation building. As soon as the present ailment of the country had been diagnosed, a true patriot had to think about remedies. To counter the colonial dominance, the nationalists felt the need to show that the condition of India was not always so weak and degraded. An empowered and proud nation had been visualized in the poet's mind. It had been provided with a gender and had been decorated with mental and physical attributes. That it had a strong and secure identity in the past is testified to even in, if the present was in darkness. But even this was not enough. The political situation was slowly changing and a new idea was emerging that patriotism was more than just worship through songs. The ideal dharma of the patriot was action. In this atmosphere of vigorous enthusiasm, patriotism could not be confined only to thoughts and ideas. It had to transcend emotion and enter the world of action. The people of the nation had to be capable of action when necessary. This is where the notion of the other came into play. In the search for national history, along with many others, Vijendralal discovered an area where valor, sacrifice, and presence of a distinct enemy could be fitted in. This was Rajasthan, colored by Todd's annals of Rajasthan. The Mughal and Muslim rule had certain essences that were distinct from that of the Hindu polity. It is only through these oppositional le levels and interplay of these oppositions that a new nation state could be visualized. A series of symbolic events of defiance of great acts are mentioned, which people must remember and reenact when it is time. Udilo te cane boto ata mukto kori te mukhodar ajio juriya or to jabot bhokti pronoto choroni jar ashok jahar kirti chailo gandhar hote jolo dishes to iki namago tadir jononi. This thy land saw Buddha's soul, high sunrise like divinity. Half the world still brings him homage in adoring ecstasy. Ashoka lit his torch of love from hoary peaks to the far deep blue. How canst thou their mother sigh in penury? How can thou weep? The Jindrulal created stereotypes of the ideal soldier one who was not afraid to march against the enemy to save his motherland, knowing fully well that he might never return, one who never turns his back on the enemy and one who is never caught alive by the foe. There can be no compromise with values, uh, uh, sorry, no compromise with adharma, lack of values. Till ancient holy traditional Arjabhatto is freed of the Mughal enemy, uh, their bodies and Hindustan cleansed with the blood, they will not rest. <clears throat> this is one of uh, Dijendralal's very famous songs, which can be considered to be one martial songs of Shomore nahi pirai bo prishthe Shotru kare ko bo habona bondi Dori na thake jai adrishthe Adharma shange kori na shundi Rabona habona bo phala prishthe Shomukha shamore jai bamrishthe 
ধাও ধাও সমর ক্ষেত্রে শত্রু সৈন্য দল করিয়া বিভিন্ন পূর্ণ সনাতন আর যাবর্থে রাখিব না রিপু দল পাদ চিহ্ন ভালো রাখতে করিব স্থান করিব বিরঞ্জিত হিন্দু স্থান সাজ সাজ সকলের অনুসাজে শোন ঘন ঘন রণ ভেরি বাজে চলো সামরে দিব জীবন ঢালি জয় মা ভারত জয় মা কালি নান শাল ইল্ড গ্রাউন্ড অর ফল্টার None the enemy's prisoner be. Adverse fate we will fear, nor parley with iniquity. Shall brute force subdue our soul? Nay, we are vowed to attain or fall. The chorus says, Brothers to arms, repel the foe. The drums boom, hark, and the bugles blow. Answer we must her ringing call. Hail, mother mine, are all in all. As I have discussed further in my book on the dramas, this other was not as simplistic as has been pointed out by those who accuse a number of Bengali intellectuals of this early 20th century as communal. In Dijendralal, at least, there, there was not only moderation, <coughs> but valor <coughs> sorry, excuse me, but also valorization of values which are not really Hindu but universal. In the Rajput plays, they are Rajput values, and in the Mughal plays, they are important human values. <coughs> there is in his writing the idea of one space appropriating another within the homogenizing demand of creating a single national history. When the poet writes a song singing praises of his birth land, John Mogumi, or when he is lamenting its degradation, it is a nation of his imagination that he is visualizing and not any particular territorial space. So whether the praises are of Bongo or Bharat is immaterial. They both refer to the idea of John Mogumi or Matribhumi. For example, when he says, Devi Amar, Shaduna Amar, Shorbu Amar, Amar Desh, <coughs> O oh my goddess, all in all, my heaven of heavens, my land dreams, land of my dreams. It could either be Bharat or Bengal or Rajasthan or any place which is the poet's dreamland and motherland. When he speaks of a distress at her disheveled hair and dim eyes with tears of grief, again, it could refer to any place. There is use of geographical and historical allusions, the appropriation of space as well. In Bongo Amar, Jononi Amar, Buddha and Ashok are mentioned with great pride, but <clears throat> we know historically they can, cannot really be claimed as Bengalis. In the next verse, there is a reference to the sons of Bengal establishing colonies of light in Tibet, China and Japan, and with their lightning legends, Allegiance conquering uh, kings and continents untold and their sentinel fleet scour scouring the seas. This romanticization of history is of course the prerogative of poetry. India has always traditionally been visualized as mother, Jononi, and the country has been venerated above all else. In 19th century Bengali literature, this tradition of Deshomatrika was formalized along with uh, some new elements. It was linked with the worship of the mother goddess in response to the revival of Hinduism among the Bengali intellectuals. The idea of the mother country was also linked to the concept of world mother or Jagot Dhanani. <coughs> the Bandona Geet or praise songs written by Dijendralal and his contemporaries contain all the elements that went to make the stereotype of a complete woman of the 19th century external and internal beauty, qualities of courage, grace and fortitude, power of creating and nurturing life. The country is the reflection of that woman. You will never find 
in the world below a land like our land of birth queen of the continents is she supremely fair on earth india in the early 20th century is nothing like the picture painted by the poet she shattered by oppression and humiliation but in the poet's imagination bharat is still in peace just like in the past when she created an uproar in the world when she emerged from the blue waters when the darkness of the night was transformed into day by the glow that emanated from her and the whole world sang her praises in unison <clears throat> Mother India, when thou rosest from the depths of oceans hoary, love and joy burst forth unbounded. Light acclaimed thee in thy glory. Darkness fled before thy splendor. Light its radiant flag unfurled. All acclaimed thee. Hail, O Mother, fosterer, savior of the world. This translation is by Sri Aurobindo. Another element that is noticeable in the patriotism of late 19th century, early 20th century is the religious coloring that is given to the idea of Mother India. Bonkin Chandra Chatterjee's Bande Mataram gave a concrete shape to the mother image in which there was an element of what Shoshi Bhushan Dashgupta calls Shokti Bhad, the worship of Shokti, Durga and Kali. The goddess is at times the nursing motherland, Dhatri or Jagat Palini, and other times she is the destroyer of evil in the form of Kali. It is undeniable that despite the negative implications of the alienation of the Muslims, the new religious aspirations were mingled with nationalistic aspirations. This dual vision of motherhood is also noticeable in the Jindralal's plays, where women are sometimes stronger, providing leadership and inspiration for the dispirited and disheartened soldiers, like in Mewar Potun. In idealism, patriotism, and courage, women in his plays are no lesser than women, but fighting for the country is made synonymous with fighting to protect the honor of the mother and wife. In the process of creating the ideal soldier, women are represented as weak, as weak needing protection. Who would hesitate to give his life for his mother, sister, and wife? Despite his emotional outpourings, Dijendra Lal was a practical visionary, able to use his knowledge and talent in a skillful combining of Western and Indian music to create innovative tunes for the songs so that they could attract the youth, even if they seemed unfamiliar. He was considered unpatriotic by many, though Rabindranath Tagore's support, despite literary differences, must have meant a great deal to the poet. As Rabindranath Tagore wrote, the fact, within quotes, the fact that Dijendralal's music has been influenced by English tunes have led some to demand his removal from the scene of Hindu music. But if he has touched Indian music with the golden wand of Western music, he will surely be blessed by Shoroshruti, the deity of music and arts. Close. Close inverted commas. Dijendralal wished to remove what he calls the monotony created by the lack of variety of moods in Bengali songs, where all songs express sweetness and softness of mood, according to him. Dijendrulal was also attracted by what he called the vigor and vitality of Western music. He successfully integrated this into Bengali music and heralded the birth of some of the best patriotic songs and love songs. He introduced other innovations into the musical style, which were straight notes, 
use of jumps from one octave to another and gradual rise in notes to a crescendo as well as change of uh, tempo in his songs. There was also an important innovation which was the use of chorus. The only chorus singing prevalent in Indian music was Nam Shong Kirtan, a type of Kirtan. In fact, in Indian classical music, there was no scope for chorus as it is basically solo, basically a solo art. Dijendralal first experimented with chorus in the refrains of his comic songs. In most of his comic songs, there is a, a, a refrain. And even in his patriotic songs, uh, the most famous of the examples are uh, for Bongu Amar, Kishet Dukko Kishet Doinno, Bharud Barsho Dhunno Hoilo Dharuni Tomar, and of course from Dhano Dhano Kushpo Bhara, Amon Deshti Kothao Kujin. Dijendralal songs gained an advantage over songs by other composers for reasons of novelty and ease of singing in unison. Rabindranath's Shartok John Muammar, also composed in the same period and of a very high lyrical and musical standard, would not be as popular as an inspirational song for a crowd because of the intricacies of tones and melodious slow movements. <clears throat> This is definitely a solo um, art use of difficult half notes, making it almost impossible to be sung by chorus or untrained voices. Jump notes are uh, was a very Im important innovation, which is very characteristic of Riel Rai songs. And this was um, possibly an influence of Western music. Number of songs may be used as illustrations of the use of this movement. It expressed emotions sometimes, as in the case of Dhano Dhanno Pushpumbhara, where in Shakul Deshe Rani Shejama Jarmo Bhumi, a gradual descent takes place. Shakul Deshe Rani Shejama Jarmo Bhumi. Then there is a sudden rise from the Modho Ma of middle octave Mudara to Rishabh Re in the Tara octave in the word Jarmo Bhumi. And again, a repetition. A descent from the Komol Ni to Rishab of Mudara. Also there in many other songs as well. And um, sometimes in two other songs, movements express patriotic fervor and intense feeling. In Jedin Shunilo Jaludi Hoite, as I demonstrated before, it is not as a um, straight note um, song as Dhano uh, Dhano. It is more a slow, and slower movements, merging notes, uh, uh, which express emotion, more emotion. But in the chorus, there is a jump from ga of the middle octave to ga of the uh, high octave. And in Dhao Dhao Shamaru Khetre, which was a martial song, of course, there is a movement in Shuno Oi Da Ke again from ga of the middle octave to sa. This is con considered to be the first martial song in Bengal. Sometimes this uh, beauty of lyrical expression is, you, uh, is also expressed in the use of novelties. For example, in another song, which is not a patriotic song, but expressing beauty of nature. <clears throat> I, I particularly like this song because it's so interesting that when he is describing um, the rising morning sun, the notes right, rise in Aroho, that is uh, in uh, so Amra Emani Shedhe Shedhe Then in the next verse, Amra Oro No Kano Koki Rane Chodi Anami. Then when the sun is setting, Amra Sham Thoro Bir Kirane Astogami. So then there is a descending of the notes. Um, 
another novelty that he introduced is also seen in one of his, one of the most famous songs, um, Moloyo Ashia, uh, which which there is a controversy whether he has written the lyrics or not. However, in the song Ghonotomo Shabrito, which was a patriotic song, <clears throat> here there is a use of the crescendo. Then there is also in this uh, song itself, there is a change of tempo. I'll try to sing this song, a very difficult song, but Ghano Tamo Shabrito Ambaro Tharoni Gorje Shindhu Choliche Tharoni Gobhiro Ratri Dahi Che Jathe Bhedi Che Dhanja Uthi Che Shor Otma Otma Dekma Cha Eito Eshe Che Aar Jinta Na you are rising in crescendo. Then there is a cut. So while there is a complete change in mood, uh, and that is expressed by the change in the tempo as well. Expertise that Dijendralal acquired in Indian classical music added to his intensive knowledge of Western music he utilized in creating a kind of newness in Bengali music. To the depth of Indian ragas, he brought the intensity of Western music. All the songs that he wrote are basically based on Indian ragas, but innovations are all introduced. His son, Dilip Kumar, who taught Bengali music in foreign universities testifies to how his songs were very acceptable to Western audiences. When in 1953, he taught Dijendrulal's to his American and German students at the Asian Academy of San Francisco, they exclaimed at the beauty of the tune. Even in Germany, when he sang Jedin Chuni no Jaloti Hoite in German, uh, it received an ovation. Uh, I have to conclude now. And um, the period of the freedom struggle from the time of the Shadishi movement around 1905 to its maturity around the mid century was a distinct transition from patriotism and sense of community to the creation of a distinct political community. But the transformation was often rather fuzzy and transition from patriotism to nationalism was indeterminate. In the initial stages, nationalism had not yet stepped into the field of political action and was in the process of articulation of history. In the relationship between imagination and nation, Vijendralal played a role in the crystallization of the nation. Imagination through the creative views of history and humor has been directed to underline the location of time and space. With awareness of Western education and Western institutions came the awareness of subjection. Patriotism had no doubt predated British rule, but there was around 1900 transformation of patriotism into nationalism, first in the realm of ideas and then in action. This involved four elements, vision, a culture, solidarity, and policy. Nationalism arose in the mind of the intellectuals as a cultural phenomenon arising out of a desire to protect or enhance a people's cultural identity under threat. Vijendralal envisaged three levels of total transformation, patriotism, which would use collective emotions as a lever to create community bonds. These in turn combined with a political agenda to create a nation. Finally, the stress on human values would remove the contradictions which might arise in the process. The growth of the common identity was the first requirement. Not only was their realization of uh, alien subjection, there also dawned among the Indians about the regional variations and which I, as I showed, the real right played with. What I want to end with is for the Hindralal, the third point, which was the stress on human values ultimately actually played the most important role because though he does praise the country, he is quite a um, 
in in the final analysis not carried away by emotions ever if you if you go through his plays this becomes most evident because everywhere he is also talking about other essences of of islam which are also praiseworthy in the rajput plays he does criticize moghal rule but that is the rule that that uh, that criticism is of um, political entity rather than um, of islam in in uh, he he actually admires rajput qualities the rajput valor <clears throat> and in, even in the moghal plays he talks about the family values he stresses family values as the most important rather than political values so that is he he uses in all his writings the to stress the importance of um human values universal values as the most important and as he says that ultimately in the creation of the nation it is not the small victories that will count but whether or not that nation has created the best human beings um kisher dukho korish tora abar kisher dukho korish bhai abar tora manush ho so it is the human values ultimately which will win the country freedom thank you very much shambhore nahi thirai bo prishthe shotru kare ko bohabo na bondi dori na thake jai adrishthe adharma sange kori na shunti rabo na hobo na bolo prito shommukh samore jai ba mrittu धाओ धाओ समरो क्षेत्र शत्रु सैन्य दल करिया विभिन्न पूर्ण सनातन आर जाबर्थे राखी बनारी पुदल पद चिन्ह मोखल राखते करिबो स्थान करिबो विरंजित हिंदुस्तान साजो साजो सकले रण साजे सुनो घन घन रन भेरी बाजे चलो समरे दिव जीवन ढाली जय मा भारत जय मा काली